Why Manchester United have to sign Andre Nana? It's pretty simple. He beats David De Gea in basically every goalkeeping metric and would move Manchester United on to the Eric Ten Hag era. We're talking a ball-playing goalkeeper that at times spends his... Uh, days outside the penalty area getting on the ball. This is exactly what Manchester United need. From a tactical perspective, having a goalkeeper that can play is so, so, so important. And I'd argue that buying a goalkeeper this summer is more important than buying a new number nine. The times that United have had to switch their style because David De Gea is poor under pressure means that the style is broken. You know, the lack of ability to play through the lines, to get into the final third and create chances. For me, signing a goalkeeper improves all the the attacking metrics. United create a better XG, they create more chances and they score more goals. And it's so, so important in the modern game to build with this back three, the two centre-backs and, of course, the goalkeeper. You know, we're talking about Manchester United's defenders. Lisandro Martinez instantly has improved United out of the back. But at times, he looks for the keeper and the keeper just isn't on in David De Gea. Losing 375 grand per week on the wage bill is something that has to happen. Signing on Anna from Inter for around, what, 40, 50 million euros? It is an absolute tap-in. You look at his range and look at his ability on the ball. He's a player that will not only get into involved in the play outside his penalty area, but he's brilliant at it. Schooled at Barcelona, learnt his trade at Ajax. He's a player that is is so, so good. Not only the, the passing range, the ability to, to move the play and break the lines into, into the forward line, but also in terms of pressure. So composed on the ball, will look to take you on, will look to beat your man 1v1 and create that spare man. And that philosophy and that idea that Eric Ten Hag has not had at Manchester United, for me, has massively hampered the development. You think in, in terms of pressure, you know, when pressurising two centre-backs in possession of the ball, you can kind of do it with one player. You can shut off the passing lanes on the inside and you can squeeze that player to the flank. When you have a ball-playing goalkeeper, it basically takes that out. It means the opponents now have got to press you with two players if they want to be effective which quite frankly means there's more space higher at the pitch. You're simply just throwing a goalkeeper into that central position, a little bit like an old school sweeper. It's going to get on the ball, means you need two players to press. Space goes higher at the pitch for the likes of Marcus Rashford and Bruno Fernandes, and you're absolutely laughing. It is so, so important. But let's take a look at Andre Anana and have a little bit of a comparison of the statistics versus David De Gea. So we've got to take to note, uh, this is his first full season after his drug ban uh, in Syria. Uh, he played 24 times in the league uh, and kept himself uh, eight clean sheets with a save percentage around 73.5%. If we take a look at David De Gea's last five seasons, he's only beaten that save percentage once. Again, showing the high quality uh, goalkeeping of someone like Andrea Nana that is fantastic. Uh, saving, but also the other attributes of goalkeepers claiming crosses and so forth. But you'd say his best performances this season came in the Champions League, Inter Milan getting to the final. Onana was a massive part of that. He prevented 7.6 goals based on a post-shot expected goals model. That is the best we've seen in the Champions League. And when you look at the the level that he, he played at in certain games, the Benfica game was one of them absolutely superb when it came to goalkeeping. Two massive, massive saves. Big performances against Milan as well in the semi-finals. You know, coming up when they needed him. Again, Inter Milan defended superbly well. Their back three, or their back five, should we say, three in midfield to up front. But Anana had to make the big saves at certain times. And I think looking at those, those moments and looking at him as this modern day goalkeeper, the pass completion against Benfica in the Champions League quarterfinals 87% or 86.7%, 7 out of his 10 accurate long passes. When you compare his, his past completion over the season, it's 81.3%. David De Gea's 71.1%. It's nearly 10% better. 10% better on the ball. But also looking at him, you know, stopping crosses. He stopped 6.1% of his crosses this season versus David De Gea's 3.1. One of the big things when it comes to goalkeeping and claiming the ball, you alleviate the pressure on your defence if you've got a goalkeeper that comes out and claims the ball. Simple. David De Gea very much stays on his line, which puts more pressure on the defenders ahead of him. Especially with Manchester United having a centre-half that's a little bit shorter than usual, and Lisandro Martinez, you need a dominant goalkeeper that's going to come out and catch the ball. It's so, so simple. Other improvements, uh, you know, sweeping off his line at uh, Ajax, absolutely fantastic. At Inter, he's sitting a little bit deeper with that back five, as you mentioned previously. You know, Simeone and Zaghi kind of change his tactical setup 
at the back end of the season. Inter didn't press as much. They sat a bit deeper. The sweeping actions, of course, for Onana were dropped off. But if we take a look at his, his best seasons, his final two seasons at Ajax, he swept off his line 1.77 times per 90. David Dea's best ever season was 1.1. We're talking a humongous improvement. And again, tactical perspective. Why is this important? When the opponents have got the ball and you're squeezing up the pitch, you want to make the pitch as small as possible. You want to be having your back line super high. You want to be squeezing, being aggressive. And United haven't quite got there with Eric Ten Hag yet versus Ajax side. Every single time you're forcing the opponent either to play a pass into midfield to intercept or alternatively... You're looking for them to play a long ball. You need a keeper that's going to come off of his line and sweep up. Onana is so comfortable there. Fantastic first touch. You know, easy as you like. And when you're looking at the basic upgrades, you talk about the, the goalkeeping side for the modern day. Ball-playing goalkeeper. Sweeps off his line. Two most, most important assets for me right now. I put that above the shot stopping. I put that above claiming the crosses. And that is what Andre Onana's got. So to conclude, why Manchester United need to sign Andre Onana? Number one, passing. Number two, shot stopping. Number three, stopping crosses. And number four, modern sweeper, keeper that suits Eric Ten Hag's style. On top of that, he played under one of Eric Ten Hag's best ever teams. He would instantly come in. I think when we saw the signing of Lisandro Martinez, a lot, there was a lot of criticism by people that didn't understand his game. But instantly came in, instantly knew what Ten Hag wanted, instantly was one of United's best players. I think a similar thing will happen with Onana. He'll come in and he knows exactly what Ten Hag wants. Not only that, he's 27 years old, so he's emerging his peak as a goalkeeper. He's got even more time to improve and he's got even more levels that he can reach. Goalkeeping is evolving Onana is that new model of a goalkeeper. If you ask him one goalkeeper, I would have bought United over the last five seasons. This is the guy. If United can make this signing happen, it will instantly improve the team. And I said before, and I'll say it again, it's the most important position United need to recruit for this summer. I'd say it's before buying a number nine. You know, United into the market, obviously the keeper's the most important. Buying a nine is big. Having someone like a Hoyland's going to add that next. And then in terms of the next priority, you know, getting a, an eight. Uh, either playing Bruno Deep, Mount High, or vice versa. That's my priority, but goalkeeper number one because it fixes the style. It allows United to play more goals based on a goalkeeper that can play out from the back. More possession, more domination. It's as simple as that. Anyway, guys, get into the comments below. Is the goalkeeping position the number one priority? Should Manchester United sign Andre Nana? And will you subscribe? The answer to that one should be yes. Get in the comments below. I'll see you in there.